you, there is you. Is everybody listen? As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. There ain't a man in this place, or woman, or child, that doesn't think they're all right. That tells you, as a man thinks in his heart, you're buffaloed. I love what Brother Steve said. Brother Steve came here, and Brother Steve declared to this house, he says, you know what? God will always keep you in a place of want and need. Want is one of him. Need is in need of him. And I, you know what? Then they're done that. The minute we think we got everything, we're control freaks. We are. We're control freaks. And God has taken the controls. You know the little bumper sticker? God is my co-pilot. No, God is not going to be your co-pilot. God is going to pilot the boat as he wishes, as he desires. But he only does it as we worship, as we bend the knee. He is not going to force anyone to do anything they don't want to do. Nobody. He is the God of miracles. We're looking for the signs, the wonders, the miracles. And I've already declared to the house, you are the signs, the wonders, and the miracles. It's when you go out there, how, did you, how are you going to be displayed? Ronnie's talking about all this stuff in Sunday school. The truth of the matter is, every, for every action, there is a reaction. And God is there all the time. You've seen me do it. He pond Why do you think he ponders the heart? He's looking to see how we're going to respond. Not only individually, but more importantly, how we respond corporately. How we flow corporately. How we move corporately. How we're willing to fit into the peace that God, or in the place where God has set us. Are we willing to stay? We're always looking for a word to say, go. But God is more interested in when he says, stay. To see how long. Is that not true? And you know what he's going to do? I love this. Thanks, Peter. I, I had a call, um, make a phone call about what I want to share today. It isn't a new message because it's all been preached. It's all been declared. But the thing is, sometimes we need to hear these things again to stir our hearts. Sometimes we need to hear these as, as warnings. I, that's why I love the prophet. What if, you, you were reading Ecclesiastes, right? I was looking at Proverbs 3. Lean not to thine own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. How many of us lean on our own understanding and then when all hell breaks loose or when the mess is so big that we can't handle it anymore, then we fall on our face and cry out to God and say, God, come fix this mess. And God is normally looking down and saying, you made it, you fix it but I'll have mercy in the midst. Amen? That's where we function. It's not words. It's spirit behind the words that we need to judge. Amen? So what I'm going to declare to you today, let me see, let me go down through this. This, is, this was my thought. I will not leave you. And it's going to take out of, it's coming out of the portion of when Elijah was taken up. And Elijah, or Elisha was coming in. It's a change in the order. Okay? But not only is it a change in the order, you have to look at what it is. Who was Elijah? Who was, who was, who, uh, and who was Elisha? If, if you remember, I've been going along and dealing with the patterned son. When John the Baptist when he was declaring, when he was proclaiming, remember they came to him and they started asking him who he was and all this? Are you the one? And he said, no, I'm not the one. But he was the voice that cried in the wilderness that declared, there is a prophetic people in the earth. They're individuals, but he, it is, it is, it's a picture of a corporate son. Just like Jesus is a picture of the corporate man. He's the head, body, everybody get that, right? 
So the prophetic voice in the earth is declaring. Are we not declaring? You know what? There ain't a person in here that can't prophesy. But not everybody in here is a prophet. But every prophet that's been called of God, you best prophesy the word of the Lord. Because there were prophets that prophesied and they didn't prophesy the word of the Lord. They prophesied out of emotions, out of feelings, out of situations, circumstances, all that. But we need a clear word. We don't need a generalized we need a word, a sure word, that will bring ultimate change into our lives. That will transform each and every one to be complete in where God has set them. Amen? All right. Hallelujah. Here we go. It is hot as fire in here. I don't know if it's you or if it's me. It's me, right? All right. So we're going to go. Let's go to, um, let's, let's go to 2 Kings chapter 2. I'm not going to deal with, because there's no way I'm going to get all this out. I'm not going to deal with a lot of the background on this. I hope, I hope most of us, we should know the background on a lot of what's going on here. Right? If you don't, come see me after church. And we can, make, we can have a meeting, or we can get together, and we can talk about these things. Amen? So here we go. And it came to pass. I love when the Bible says it comes to pass. Because, Ronnie, didn't you, didn't you say next week you're going to deal with, what was that word? The A word. Anxiety. Anxiety. And it will come to pass. If... If, I love Brother Sexton, used to preach on the if-so-bees. And we think that God is so unconditional, but I find more conditions in the book that apply to us. So if you bend the knee... God can take care of your anxiety. Oh, I'm a poet and I don't even know it. All right, here we go. And it came to pass, when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah, yeah, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Now, y'all remember when I shared, I don't know how many months ago, from Gilgal to Bokim, Right? We all know that. What is Gilgal picture? Does everybody know what Gilgal is a picture of? It's really it's a picture of your born again experience. It's, it's the initial encounter with God. Right? Because Gilgal, what does Gilgal mean? Remember? Nobody knows? Nobody remembers? It means it's a wheel or rolling back the, repro the reproach. What happens when we come to the waters of baptism? See, to ask somebody if they've been baptized is not the right question to ask them. The question to ask them is, have you been circumcised? And if they understand what circumcision is, you don't have to worry about if they understand what the baptism is. Because they got it. Is that not right? Okay. So Gilgal means rolling back the reproach. And all what happened in Gilgal, I can go into, we can go back to Joshua. Go back and read Joshua uh, chapters 3, 4, 5, and, yeah, 3, 4, and 5. Remember, they were getting ready to, Moses died. Actually, he was taken up in a whirlwind, if I can say it like that. He, oh, he went up into a high place in God because God told him, you go up into that mountain and you die. And remember, they went and looked for him? Did they find him? You know, you get down here in the, 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 the school of the prophets, they asked Elisha, they said, hey, we want to go look for him. He said, nope, don't go do it. And they bugged him, and finally he said, have at it. And when they came back and said we couldn't find him, he says, I told you so. You wasted your time. 
Okay? So, Joshua, they're getting ready to do what? Cross the Jordan. Remember the whole issue about the priests? The priests took 12 stones, right? 12 stones here. They went out, the priests, in the middle of the Jordan. They set up a memorial. Then they took 12 and put it on there, the double witness. Come on, are we here? Are we, do we know this? We ought to know this. Because this speaks of this, I'm telling you, this is the individual experience. Gilgal. That's where God deals with you as an individual. Remember, they do the Passover. They have the Passover. Remember they have the Passover? The Passover doesn't apply to the whole man. It applies to you individually. I can't do that for you. You can't do that for anybody else. That's between you and God. Water baptism, that's between you and God. I can't do that. That's, you, this, that's what I'm talking about. This is your individual experience. Gilgal. Okay? Here we go. Remember what Pastor... Side note, commercial break. How many weeks ago, months ago, whatever, Pastor said, he started reading out of Hebrews 6, chapter 1, the Lord gave him a message, and he said what? Let me go on to perfection. No, no, no. Let who? Who? Well, apparently it still must be a me because it doesn't sound like the whole house is excited about we're all going on to perfection. See, we'll say these things, but if it doesn't excite you, guess where you're going to be left? Gilgal. I didn't say that. If you have an issue with anything I say today, take it up with the master, because he wrote the book. I'm going to just read what, what I'm reading. What, I'm reading Bible. I hear my brother say that all the time. And you know what? It torques people off. You know why? Because it isn't story time. It's God time. God's trying to mature people. And sometimes we don't like that because we like to have it our way. We think it's McDonald's, and it ain't our way. God, I'm telling you, it's like that song, God is bringing you and putting death in its place, that you'll fit into the corporate man where he sets you. And he's going to give you a choice. And not only is he going to give you a choice, he's going to do exactly what he did with Elisha. He's going to say, no, don't do it. He's going to give you every single opportunity not to go on. And he's pondering your heart to see whether you will go on or not. Mark my word. I declare it to this house and to this generation that God is calling a people to get up and go on. To move from where you're at. Pastor had the word. Let us go on. Not pastor, but us. I shared a message with you all from Gilgal to Bochim. A, old, a whole generation died off. And I said, no. The Lord showed me and gave me the snapshot of the picture that we all would go on as one man. Not only in the visible, but those in the invisible. Ones that you can't see. Oh, Brother Stephen said, I don't know how many months ago when we were sharing, says that this thing is eternal. God's been building this man for a long time. And it's whether you're going to fit in to his program. That's it. All right, here we go. So Gilgal, rolling back the reproach. Oh, back to Joshua. So you know all what happened with Joshua, right? Do we understand Joshua's a picture of Jesus? He has a double witness in the earth. Twelve stones there, twelve stones there. It's a governmental order. I mean, you can, you, can, you can run around this thing a million different ways. It all comes out the same. God is doing it as one man. And he has an order and he has set his government order into a people in the earth that will carry this load. All right, here we go. Woo, I love it. So circumcision. It also speaks of the first fruit and the tithe. Remember when, remember when they crossed over? Remember what was the first city they went to? We're going to deal with Jericho. They went to Jericho. I'm talking Joshua now. Joshua went over to Jericho. The walls came down and all that. That's exactly what's going to happen in your life. God is tearing down your walls. But how he is doing it, he is doing it by a word.
And what did Achan do? See, Achan was a picture of this is what we do. We think because we get all this, and, and when I say we, I said it generalized. You talk to people, half the people don't believe in the tithe. Some people believe in the tithe. Some people don't. You know what? I like, you know what? I know I say this. I know my pastor says this. I hear my brother say this. I've heard others say this. Guess what? I really don't believe in the tithe either. New Testament is 100%. You've been bought with the price, you're not your own. Ain't any of yours anyways. So if you want to deal with the tithe and be nitpicking and all that, have at it. Really what he wants is a complete. God is doing it. When you can get and have the abundance of the natural and not one bit of it phase you when God says, here, we'll take this and put it over there, we'll take this and put it over there, we'll take that and put it over there, we'll take that and put it over there. And, and then and you not even be phased by it. Most of us would be phased by it. Let us go on to perfection. You know the beauty of it is? God is merciful. He's gracious. He's enabled us. Why has he enabled us? Because he's filled us with his spirit. That's the enabling power that is going to get. There's power, power, power in the name. Where is that name? In here. It's called the Holy Ghost. And he empowers us. Where does he empower us? Not so much individually, but there is application. Don't, remember, there's always application on the individual, but God is dealing with the corporate man. If you want to stay at Gilgal, have at it. He'll leave you there. He's gonna, he'll leave you there. But this is what it is. He wants you to move on. All right, I'm not going to get it all out of here. So he dealt with the Passover, Exodus 12, 2 and 3. All right, I'm going to throw some scripture out there. Josh, Joshua chapters 3, 4 and 5 is going to deal with this. Remember what else happened? Remember what happened when they crossed into the land? Oh, bummer. No more manna. And how many churches and people run around and say, we need the manna of the word. We need that manna from heaven every day. You ain't getting it. It's angel's food. No, they said, what is it? And guess what it did? It stopped. And guess what happened if they took the manna that came today and kept it for tomorrow? What happened? Oh, well, how many of us think we can live on yesterday's word when God is declaring a new word for today? All right, here we go. All right, 12 stones, did all that, did all that. Gilgal speaks of the individual. All right, it's you and God. Here we go. And it came to pass when the Lord, back, back to this, 2 Kings, right, that the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Terry here, I pray thee for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. I'm moving on. But you can stay here. Let's move on to perfection, Christ Life Fellowship. But if you want to stay where you're at, have at it. This is what he's saying. All right, here we go. He sent me to Bethel. And Elijah said unto him, As the Lord liveth, as the Lord. God Almighty, as He lives. Right? And thy soul, uh, as the Lord uh, 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 liveth, and thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. They're moving on. Come on, folks. I'm declaring what God is trying to say to the house. And I'll guarantee you, there's people in every one of these stages in this house, or we know people in every one of these stages, and God is declaring to Christ Life Fellowship, it's time to move on. We've had ministry after ministry after ministry come on and say the same exact word. We're not saying anything different. Pastor has got the word for the, for the year. Which the truth of the matter is, it's been the word from the beginning that, he, that God sent him here because he said, I have sent you to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Sheep or Christians just wandering about with no direction. And God is saying, come, I'm putting a direction in your life so you can move on. Yes. 
All right, here we go. All right, let's see here. Verse 3, 2 Kings 2, verse 3. And the sons of the prophet that were at Bethel. So you know what was happening. Depending on how it goes, some people, Samuel, remember Samuel. Everybody remember Samuel? What, what was Sam, what, Samuel's greatest thing is what? The Bible says that his words never fell to the ground. What was Samuel's worst thing? Come on, you know what it is. He had crappy kids. You know what? If your kids don't, don't, don't. I was a crappy kid. You want to you know why? Because the Bible says, the Bible says, not, not Brother Tim, not Pastor Dale, not any of y'all. You don't say this. The Bible declares it. It says, children, obey your parents. When you don't obey your parents, kids, listen up. When you don't know your parents, you're a crappy kid. Oh, I think Pastor said it on Thursday. You've missed the mark. See, he said that in Christ there's no sin. Did you not say this? That is when the whole man is complete. You ain't going to have to worry about anything. Remember? When you put God as your priority in your life, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, you ain't going to have to. Remember, Brother Tim said, I've been declaring since the beginning of the year, maybe a little before, I declared conviction. The conviction isn't for the poo-poo stuff. The conviction is for why God chose you in the first place. Then I got this little revelation. A little bird whispered in my ear. and said, Because Brother Tim, you say all the time, you know what, the greatest thing we got going for is that we picked us. Well, guess what? He picked Judas too. Hmm. 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 So be very careful in thinking just because he picked you. There it is. There's opportunity. Is that not what is happening right here? He is given, Elijah is given, Elijah, every single opportunity to stay put. Don't move on. The Lord says, stay. But he was so joined by the Spirit that he said, no. That's why he said, even as my soul liveth, I'm going on with you. I ain't staying here. Because there it is, Brother Bud. Because I ain't missing out on what God has for the house. Amen? All right, here we go. Oh, is it nice and loud for you? Praise the Lord. All right. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm excited. I love this. You know what? And guess what? I'm like Paul. I'm the chiefest of sinners. I make more mistakes, screw up more. But it does not change the facts. God has declared. And he's just saying, brother, get in line. Get in line. Find your place. Fit in. Remember the little puzzle piece? I was showing the key. He was over the house. I said, look, can you even believe it? One extra piece. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Let's see. Verse 3. And the sons of the prophet went above. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. See, I start telling, and I get sidetracked. So Samuel, they think Samuel was the one that started. We've all heard school of prophets. Well, there was a school of prophets at Bethel. Right? That's what they're saying. So there's all these prophets there, 50 of them. Hallelujah, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, Pentecost, woo! Okay? So the sons came down to Elisha and said to him, Hey, don't you know that they're going to take your master today from you? He says, Yeah, I know. He didn't only call him his master. Check this out. He said, 
his ma your master and your your what? Your head. One of the biggest problems we have in Christianity today is we don't hold the head. I believe Colossians says that. All right. Awful quiet. Awful quiet. That's all right. I know you're thinking. That's what I want to do. I want to provoke to thought. Because the truth is, God's got this. He's captivated this. When he captivates our mind to be in line with what God is saying here, we will fall in place. It ain't going to come any other way. No other way. I don't care how you think it. You're not going to talk your way through this. You're not going to talk your way into this. It's only going to be by the Spirit. All right, here we go. All right, he's going to take away your head today. And he said, yea, I know, hold your peace. Told him, hold your peace. And Elijah said to, to, to Elisha, tarry here. Here he goes. Now we're at Pentecost, Bethel. Woo-hoo, right? Bethel, everybody loves Bethel. What's Bethel? House of God, right? Remember the Jacob story? Angels descending, ascending. Man in the heaven, the man in the earth. Woo, right? We're taking a roller coaster ride up and down. We know that, right? He put his what? He put his head on a pillow of what? Stones. Peter said what? Hey, you are what? What, one person knew that? Living stones, lively stones. What do you think of the head? What he's laying his head. And what else happened there? Remember, I, I shared this with you guys. What else happened to him there? What happened to Jacob, the supplanter? What happened to you? You got a name change. Oh, and I remember pastor shouted out and said, and a promise. Ah, but there is an if so be. Oh, oh brother Bud, he reads his Bible. Hmm, very good. <laughs> I got to make you laugh because you guys take it so serious sometimes. Oh, it is serious. But we can laugh. Because you know what? He's laughing. All right, here we go. What else does Bethel speak of? Oh, remember Bethel? What was the name of Bethel because before it came Bethel? Remember Luz talked about the almonds? Remember? See, see, I'll tell you what. The people, you want to know what poo-poo people are? Poo-poo what people are trying to people that try to separate everything. Try to separate the Old Testament from the New Testament. No, 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 no. God has taken this thing from the beginning. He has been saying the same thing from the beginning. He has declared the same thing from the beginning. And all he has changed is the placing of where the word was. Oh, just like the Old Testament. He took it from the stones out there and he put it in here. It's still the same word. You don't like law? Change it to word. If you don't like law, it's because you're lawless. People that don't like the law or don't like the word because that's all the law was, was the word, means you have a problem with the author. I didn't say that. He says that. That's what he says. That's what the book says. That's why he told you don't add to it and don't take away from it. If you do, you have an issue. All right, here we go. So Luz, Luz means almond. Oh, where did we see the almond? Oh, Aaron's rod. See, how long ago was that? Here we're in Kings, Second Kings. How, long, how much time has passed? See, we read these and we're like, oh, like it was, oh, it was on the page before. No, it could have been, He has not changed one iota of what he has said. And he is going from generation to generation to generation to generation to generation until he has that man complete. And out of every generation or every age, he has picked one here, 
He has picked one there. He has picked one here. He has picked one there. And out of the generations to come, even in this house, he may just pick a few of you. Because some of y'all might want to stay at Gilgal. Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Some of you might even want to move down to Bethel, but didn't want to go any further. Oh, what did he say here? Oh, and Elijah says, Elijah, Terry here. Stay here. Stay at Bethel. Woo, praise and worship. Oh, you get a, what was that? You could be the head, do, you could be the head prophet. Thus saith the Lord. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just showing you how, how, this, how this thing is. He'll give you every single opportunity to stay where you're at. This is not going to, it's not going to come by happenstance. It's just not going to fall into your lap. We want it that way. Listen up, kids. Listen up, kids. Just because mommy and daddy, mark my word, God is going to take you to Gilgal, just like he took every one of us. Then he's going to take you to Bethel if you're willing to move on in him. And if you're willing to move on from Bethel, he's going to take you to Jericho. And in Jericho, do you understand what happens at Jericho? So you've got all the different stories about Jericho. But you know in 2 Kings here what's happening at Jericho? Do you realize what's going on there at Jericho? Do you know what Jericho speaks of? What are, some of the names of Jericho is Moon City, right? The Moonies. No, it ain't the Moonies. The Moon speaks of the church, right? But it also speaks of a fragrance. God, oh, oh, geez, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, sacrifice. How does God eat, remember? A sweet-smelling savor unto the Lord. It's a sacrifice. Oh, Brother Bill talked about it, and I think we, probably everybody in the place has probably shared a little bit about beauty for ashes. How do you get ashes? Oh, you mean, you mean that he just, because of his love, he just, oh, he just put it on my forehead. No, he burned you up. And there was nothing left. Beauty for ashes. All right? What else, what else does Jericho speak of? Uh, let's see here. Did I get everything done with Bethel? Does everybody understand Bethel? You know what he said? He told him to stay there. And Elisha said... As the Lord liveth, and my soul liveth, I'm not going to leave thee. You, you remember when Pastor dealt with 1 John 2 and 19 about the Antichrist? Nobody remembers that? Thursday night, a few weeks back? If you go on your, what's it called, KSN, knowledge, knowledge something or another, on your eSword, this is one of the scriptures that deals with 2 Kings 2 and 1, where he's dealing with, where he says, I will not leave you. And see, he said, those that have left were not of you. The opportunity is always there to stay or to go. Choice is up to you. Okay? Another little story that we all should be familiar with. Everybody remember Ruth, Orpah, Naomi? Who stayed and who went? And what did Ruth say? Or I mean, uh, yeah, Ruth. What did she say? She said the same thing. As my soul liveth. Your people? Oh, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute now. Your people are going to be. Mi casa, you casa. That's what she was saying. And she wouldn't leave. But Naomi would gave her, same, the story doesn't, same thing, gave her every opportunity to leave. And she wouldn't do it. All right? Here's another one. Remember David and his mighty men? 
2 Samuel 15 and 21. Remember when Absalom took over? Oh, remember when one of the rebellious kids in the church rose up and said, hey, I'm going to be the pastor. And he went around and he tried to... Oh, yeah. Y'all remember. Might even happen in your house. You know what? It may even be happening in your house. Your kids might be running the show. And David fled. And remember we went to, down to Gath? to the Gittites, and there was a man called Ithia, I think, Itha, something like that, I-T-H-A or something like that, I-A, I-T-H-I-A. And he said the same thing. They said, David said, said, dude, man, go, 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 go. And he said, mm-mm, I'm sticking, sticking with you. There's a point in all these stories. In America, we make it so easy to quit. I don't like my wife, I dump her, get me somebody new. I don't like that one, I'll dump her and get another one. Don't like him, I dump him. Don't like this church, I'll leave here. Don't like that car, I'm gonna go get a new one. Don't like this house, I move into another neighborhood. Never satisfied. Don't like the way the house looks, gonna change it around. I and I'm not talking about you, Mom. <laughs> or you, sister Irene. I can go through the whole room, name every one of you, because we're all like that in a way. The point is, the point is, being content with God has you. Being able to hear the voice of God in the midst of everything that we do. Don't like this job? Who was it? Oh, Brother Bill was the one. I, I love what Brother Bill said, because you know what Brother Tim always says? How does God, how, when you're at work, how does, how, does, how, how does God spell God? B-O-S-S. And remember, he said, if you don't like that boss and you quit and you go someplace else, they're normally the guys are worse than the one you just had. So who is God talking to? The boss? Oh, no, 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 no. He's talking to you. You know that person at work? Oh, the F-bomb guy. You know why the fra Yeah, I like that. The fragrance guy. You know why the fragrance guy is there, right? You know why the fragrance guy... Hey, I work in a place that the whole place is filled with fragrant people. I used to be one of them people. But God is speaking. I've been declaring to the house, God has got something to say. I'm not always sure, I'm not always clear on what God is saying, but I do know this, God is building a man. God is joining us. God is stripping us of our individuality. Oh, that would be the middle initial or letter in sin or, ooh. See, sin is like, that's a, like an abstract word, but pride really hits the point. We don't like that one. That's it. See, pastor, he's always right. Pride. No. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Remember, I'm the chiefest. I make more mistakes than probably all of y'all. But it doesn't change the purpose of what God is saying. And don't let that be an excuse. Remember, bend the knee. All right, here we go. I got lots of time. You know why? Because I don't work on Sundays anymore. See, you guys have no sense of humor. What are you going to do when I'm here all the time? Let me ask you this. What are you going to do when God decides to take Pastor Sister Fran in a whirlwind? You going to bail or are you going to keep building because God is building this thing through the generations and he's picking and choosing as he wills. See, it's not a natural thing. It's a spiritual thing. We look, I said, I don't know when I declared it, we, we look too much at the natural. We got to be able to, we got to be able to see beyond why do, you think he, why do you think Paul said, I believe it was Paul said, 
No, no man after the... Why would he say that? Because flesh and blood have no part in the kingdom. All right. You, that's, that's true, Brother Bud. It would be your failure every time. You know what? If it could be naturally produced, I'll guarantee you, with the technology nowadays, it would be produced. That shows you it ain't natural. All right. Here we go. Don't stay there. Don't stay at Bethel. So then we're going to Jericho. Okay, Jericho, fragrant moon city. Oh, speaks of the palms. Remember? In Song of Solomon. Who is this one that comes up out of the wilderness leaning on her beloved? The stately one. Who is it? Do you know who? Do you know who they're talking about? It is this corporate man. Leaning on her beloved. Let's see here. Y'all with me today? Do you love the Lord today? Do you love Him with all your heart? That's what He's looking for. That's what He's looking for. And Elijah said to, to Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho, and said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophet that were at Jericho, they came to Elijah and they said to him, Knowest thou that, knowest thou that the Lord is going to take away your master from you and your head from you today? And he answered, Yes, I know. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry here. All right, I pray, uh, Tarry here, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. I declare to this house. Y'all listening? Everybody. I declare to this house, God's got us on a journey. He's taken us from Gilgal. If he hasn't taken you to Gilgal, come see me and pastor after church, and we'll deal with Gilgal in your life. If he's taken you to Bethel, if you are willing, once you went to Gilgal, you went to Bethel, you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, evidence speaking in tongues. Parents, listen to me. I think I said this before. You must talk to your kids about it. One of the things we're afraid to talk to in the church anymore is the evidence of speaking in tongues. If you don't have a heaven, and I'm not saying tongues isn't, is everything, but if you are not baptized, if you do not have the baptism of the Holy Ghost in your life, there is no way possible you'll ever walk this thing out. You've got to have a heavenly language. It edifies you. Brother Steve came here. He declared, in order for us to be having, or in order for us to have a, a, a conversation with God, in order for us to be able to communicate with Him, we got to talk His language. And remember, He went through the whole thing. We all speak English, so we all understand one another, more or less. Can you imagine if everybody in here spoke a different language? What do you think happened on the day of Pentecost? Why were they on the day of Pentecost? Why were all those different people that spoke all them different languages all able to understand? Because it wasn't a natural thing. But God was using their natural tongue. All right? I'm telling you. And don't think your kids are too young. Or too old. Or... Don't assume. I'm telling you, don't assume they already have it or they know what it's all about. I'm telling you. The word has been declared. Let's move on to perfection. You want to stay where you're at? For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're moving on. Whatever it takes. And you know what? I have no idea what all that just means when I just said, whatever it takes. And some of the stuff, I may not like it, but I'm sure when I get on board with God's program, it ain't going to matter. I'll guarantee you, no matter how well you think you have it here, what God has in store is far greater, and you ain't even going to worry about it. 
And if that's all you worry about, all right, here we go. I'm telling you, God is jacking this thing up. Why is he jacking it up? Because he can. He's God. All right, so here we go. It ain't even 1 o'clock yet. So he said to him to stay here, the crossing over. Oh, yeah, back to the Jordan. I almost forgot. What does the Jordan speak of? But where does it flow down to? Because God is looking for people that can cross over the Dead Sea or over the Jordan, cross over and be able to come back. It still is the same picture ascending and descent as one that can cross over into death and come back into life. Resurrection. I think that's what Pastor said. It's resurrection life. If you can't cross over the Jordan and come back and bring deliverance, you have no resurrection life. Because that's exactly what happened here. Elijah struck the waters, went across with Elisha. Remember? The whirlwind. See ya. On the other side. What did he do? He picked up the mantle and he went back across. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see. Second Kings 2 and 6, that was what I just read. Leave you on. Uh, Elijah said to Terry here, pray thee. We're going across the Jordan. And he said, as the Lord liveth and as I soul liveth, see, I will not leave you. See, he still gave him an opportunity. Isn't it amazing if you read down through this three times? Uno, dos, tres. In a complete dimension of who you are, spirit, soul, and body, he gives you opportunity to stay. But God is looking for the whole man to be risen up in resurrection life that can cross over and come back and bring life. He's looking for a whole man. Jesus, when he ascended, went as a whole man. He didn't go as a spirit. Right? When is a whole man? The pattern son. The book. It ain't any different. He's looking for a people that can cross over death. The last enemy to overcome is the Jordan. All right? Here we go. And he said he wouldn't leave them. They went on in the 50 sons of the prophet. Uh, they went and they stood off of you. Isn't it amazing? Hmm. See them over there? They wouldn't go over. They could have went with them. They didn't. How many church folks you know? They ain't going to move on with you. How many y'all? Look, there they go. Hmm? David and Jonathan. See? Same story. Through the book. The word has not changed. All right, here we go. And Elijah took up his mantle and wrapped it together around him, smote the waters, invited the water hither and thither, and the two went over on the dry land. All right? See, when the water parted, guess what it did? Death came right back and rolling. See, the water just didn't stand up and just stay there. No, it came right back. Death is always working. Doesn't the Proverbs say? What are, what are the things that are never full? One of them is the grave. Never says enough. The question is, is whether it be working in... All right, here we go. They didn't like that one, Brother Jim. All right. And it came to pass that they gone over, and Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall for thee before I, take, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. I pondered hard on that. I say to my folks all the time, because you know what? They're just like everybody else. They put their pants on the same way everybody else does, except for me. I lay on the bed, 
put both legs on at the same time. Everybody else does one leg at a time. Joke. So they get concerned about, right, getting up in age, all the natural stuff. You know what I always say? The inheritance that they think they've already given it, and I'm walking it out. You know what? I said to Savani, I said, you know, Brother Steve, he talked about Josiah, and he said, and listen up, folks, there's a lot of y'all in here that this can be applied to. Oh, gee, let me see, maybe all of you. So he said that what the Lord started in Brother Sexton in Detroit, way back yonder, put it in him, which flowed down to me, which is flowing into him, and he said four generations. So then I said to Savani, I said, you know, I think about that all the time. And I said, well, and I never looked at it, went all the way back to Brother Saxon. But you know what? It did go to Brother Saxon. But you know, it can even go back further because you figure all the men that imparted into the man's life because God had his, from the beginning, his finger in the matter. And he was seeing this thing through the generation. But I said to Savani, I said, look, you have Brother Saxon, pastor, your mama, you, and now your kids. And I said, look at the grace that's shown on you. There's five generations. And there's lots of yous you can count them through. Doesn't matter if it's one. Doesn't matter if it's two. Doesn't matter if three. Doesn't matter if it's ten generations. The issue is God is still working. Don't let it stop in a generation. Remember, remember... I, I know I'm going long, and you know what? It's good. It's good for y'all. Remember what happened in the wilderness? Forty years. We always start, We always count generations, whether it be 40 years, 50 years. Well, you know what he said? In 40 years, right, one generation, guess what happened? All the men of war died off. And why did they die off? Because they were rebellious. And what didn't they do? Remember I dealt with that whole thing? What didn't they do? They never dealt with Gilgal. They never circumcised their kids. I mean, can you imagine? And this is what we do in the church. Oh, because we're smart. You got to get water baptized. But see, my pastor always told me that one of the things about water baptism and circumcision that really, that really set in him, that really said, yeah, this is it. Oh, we just sang the song because we believe. Mark 16 and 6 then says, He that is baptized, or he that believeth and is baptized. Uh, how many, uh, so then you start to wonder, well, how many just out of, and then we wonder why they don't make it to Bethel. And then we wonder why they don't get down to Jericho, which, oh, you thought I forgot about Jericho, what really happened there? One of the greatest miracles was God's people were complete. He already wound or weeded out all the people that were willing to stay in Gilgal, all the people that were willing to stay in Bethel, all those people that still had their eye on said, I'm going across that Jordan. I'm going with you. I'm sticking it out. They kept their mouths shut. They didn't complain. They didn't murmur. They didn't psychological none of it. They stayed in the spirit as one man. And to every wall in their lives was tumbled down. Everything. That's the word of the Lord to the house. And when it comes to your kids, I'm telling you, you best talk to your kids coming in and going out about the Word of the Lord. I don't care how old they are. And even if they're a stiff neck pain in the rear, talk it anyways. Be nice, though. Be nice. And then you put to practice what pastors has always said, 
And you can't talk to the man about God. You talk about God, to, about the man, and you stay out of it. Oh, what did you just say about, about um, um, oh, oh, venting? Hmm. And that Ron Sting, a kid, go, right? Rebellious, no good, rotten, fragrance. Got the point, didn't I? I'm telling you, with God, with God, with God, if you're in union with God, guess what's going to happen? Oh, no, 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 not when you're in union. Oh, we're going to see. Oh, jeez, I got too much. All right, what was I saying now? Do you remember? Oh, yeah, no more death. No more barren. No more miscarriages. No more abortions. That's what the Jordan speaks of. God's looking for people that can cross over, conquer death. See, we, we read these things, we think these things, and we think, we almost think sometimes they're fairy tales. Nah. -uh. Nikita, what would you say? If the book says it, where's he at? Oh, what would you say? If the book says it, it's going to happen. Oh, I think Brother Steve said, Brother Steve said, what would you say? Isaiah. How many years? And we can't go for 10 seconds at the time. Two minutes. <laughs> mm, all right. Here we go. I'm almost done. Look, I ran out of notes. I did. I ran out of notes. Let me wrap it up. Let me see if I can find this. Get this. Mm. Oh, yeah, now I remember. Does that make you feel good? I know. I got to laugh because I'm, I tell you what, I'm excited. I'm excited because of what God's doing. I'm excited that God has set me in a, in, a, in a family. He set me in the midst of the people that are willing to cross over. I didn't say everybody understands everything. Sometimes we don't even know the right direction other than up. See, when we sing these songs that says he's holy, it's all about him. The individual must be taken out of the picture. Unless we're dealing with Gilgal. From there, no longer individual. No greater love now does a man have than he lay down his life for another. Why do you think he said, remember what he said to the boys? Hey! Greater works, right? Greater works you're going to do, right? So what do we all? Oh, God. Get out. You really, you want to know what he's speaking of? The anointing on all of us is far greater than the anointing on any one of us. Greater works. How much greater when... But how much greater when we all in union, in harmony, with one accord? How much? How much? I will not leave you. I will not leave you. I will not leave you. And you know what? When we walk out the door, there's going to be every opportunity to leave him. God proves his word. Oh, no, he doesn't, Brother Tim. He loves me so much. I love it. But God will give you every single opportunity to walk away or stay put. And I declare today to Christ Life Fellowship, I declare to this house, God is telling this people, 
cross over the Jordan, conquer death. Most of us have been there. Most of us have been to Bethel. He doesn't want you to camp out at any of them places, but he'll allow you to if that's where you want to camp out. We, we hear it all. That's even the phrase that we hear. How many different camps are there in the body of Christ? What, is, what do you think that means? That means people were willing to camp. And there's only one destination. That's it. Why do you think he called you Hebrews? Those are the crossover. I think my brother came here and preached the message. What's your occupation? It's crossover. I declare to this house, God's, God's calling you. You, not each individual, but you to cross over. Conquer. The Lord be with you. You be with him now. See, he's with you. The question isn't if he'd be with you. The question is whether you be with him. Remember, Jesus loves me. I love you, Lord. Yes, he loves me. But do you love him with a whole heart? It's a third dimension. See, he didn't write, I love this. In the epistles, he says, I ain't writing you any new commandments, but an old commandment I write. What was that? Love the Lord thy God with all your heart. Amen? All right, on your feet. Love yous. Love yous. Nobody loves me, huh? Sorry. I was, saying, I, I was trying to be sweet. I think, I think somebody came here and said, be nice. I was trying to be nice. But you know what? Some, some of this stuff is serious. Because you know what? I, I said it. It's, it's, easy, it's easy to get caught up. But we must get excited about things that God is doing. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Great word. Great word. Great word. I uh, just wanted to say this. I mentioned on Thursday um, that uh, Father's Day is coming on the uh, 17th, I, I think. 17th is Father's Day. And the 16th, which is Saturday, I've always invited uh, all the fathers to come up to Cracker Barrel and Holyoke, and I buy them breakfast. And I think we can still do that. We got a couple of issues. Uh, as you all know, at this present time, there's a, there's a, we got three of our, our men working down at the casino while they're building and they just put they just put David on uh, seven twelves so he's it, it's it's pretty it's pretty difficult to uh, to lay aside um, you know almost 60 bucks an hour while you're uh, while you're working double time so uh, we're still going to do it but uh, for the ones that miss out we'll all get together yeah, we're going to eat their breakfast. So. <laughs> but anyway, on um, 8.30, 8.30 on the 16th, uh, we're all going to meet at the Cracker Barrel and have breakfast. And, uh, 8.30, 8.30, 8.30. Don't you love them? Right, and if you're not there by 8.30, we'll eat your, we're going to eat your breakfast. So. Amen. Praise God. Hey, praise God. Anybody got any, anybody prayer? Anybody need prayer? Anybody? Okay, sit down there on that front chair, Chris.